Different eras come and go, but there are some eras that can and should never be forgotten. An example of such is the Hollywood Golden Era, the period when some of the finest actors in the history of Hollywood made their name in the film industry and marked their spots in the history of Hollywood. One of such actors is the legendary Vivian Lee, who achieved film immortality by playing two of the most celebrated roles in American literature. For one of the roles, she had to beat 1,400 other actresses to get the spot. Legendary indeed! In today's video, we will be revealing all there is to know about Vivian Lee, who is popularly called Vivling. So if you have not subscribed to this channel, quickly tap the subscribe button. Let's get started. Early Life Vivling was born as Vivian Mary Hartley in Darjeeling, Bengal Presidency, a subdivision in British India. She was born on November 5, 1913, to Ernest Richard Hartley, a Yorkshire broker, and Gertrude Mary Francis, who was of Irish descent. She had no other siblings and was very close to her mother. She was introduced by her mother to the theater at the age of three, where she got to recite Little Bo Peep for her mother's amateur theater group. She learned all about literature from her mother, who introduced her to the works of the greats like Lewis Carroll and Hans Christian Andersen, as well as Indian folklore and Greek mythology. When she was six years old, she and her family moved to England, where she got enrolled at the Covent of the Sacred Heart in southwest London. She met Maureen O'Sullivan, who soon became an actress and inspired Vivian to also become an actress. She was, however, removed from the school by her father and traveled with her parents for four years, attending some of the best schools in Europe, including the Sacred Heart in San Remo, on the Italian Riviera, and several other schools in France. This was when she learned to speak Italian and French fluently. When she was 18, she and her family returned to England, where she attended one of Maureen O'Sullivan's films, A Kentucky Yankee, playing in London's West End. After the show, her lifelong passion of becoming an actress was reignited, and she told her parents of her dream of becoming an actress. Her mother was elated, and her father enrolled her at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art in London. Career Following her friend's recommendations, she took a small role in the film Things Are Looking Up as a schoolgirl. Although this was an uncredited role, it led to her meeting an agent, John Gildon, who helped her get better roles in movies. He didn't like the idea of her entering the movie industry as Vivian Holman, arguing that it was an unsustainable name for an actress, and suggested several names for her, including April Morn. She rejected each one and adopted Vivian Lee after her first husband, changing her name from Vivian to Vivian to make it sound more feminine. Her agent once recommended her to Alexander Korda, a British film producer and director, who rejected her saying she lacked potential. Sidney Carroll did, however, cast her in his play The Mask of Virtue in 1935. Her performance received some excellent reviews, which were followed by several interviews and newspaper articles about her. John Betjeman, who later became a poet laureate, described her as the essence of English girlhood. She gained so much attention, Alexander Korda, who had earlier rejected her, admitted his mistake, apologized, and signed her after attending her opening night performance. Korda moved her play to a much larger theater, but the play closed soon after because she could not project her voice across the theater. Despite being an inexperienced actress, she continued to get major roles in films and soon enough got to star in the same movie with her longtime friend Maureen O'Sullivan in A Yank at Oxford, produced in 1938. It was through this film that she gained recognition in the U.S. A year after, she heard that David O. Selznick was in search of an actress to play Scarlett O'Hara in his production Gone with the Wind and instructed her agent to send in her application. Selznick watched her performance and thought she was a perfect fit, although he felt she was too British for the Irish character. Lee traveled to Los Angeles and was able to convince Selznick that she was perfect for the job. She later went on to win an Academy Award for Best Actress and a New York Film Critics Circle Award for Best Actress after the release of the film. She won another Academy Award for Best Actress for her role as Blanche Dubois in the film A Streetcar Named Desire in 1951 and a Tony Award for her part in the Broadway musical version of Tovarich in 1963. After her 30-year career, she was ranked the 16th greatest female movie star by the American Film Institute in 1999. Personal Life She was diagnosed with bipolar disorder in the mid-1940s and was known to suddenly change her mood for no reason. Although this rarely happened in the movies, she earned a reputation for being difficult to work with. And one time, while on the set of a movie, she just started screaming at everyone, and after a while went silent and didn't say a single word until the day was over. The next day, she had absolutely no recollection of the previous day's events. 
In 1932, she got married to a wealthy barrister, Herbert Lee Holman, who was 13 years her senior. Despite the fact that he didn't approve of theatrical people, she went on with her career and even adopted his name as her stage name. They had a daughter together in October 1933. She met Laurence Olivier, an English actor and director, and they began an affair while playing the role of lovers in Fire Over England in 1937. While she was still married to Holman, their relationship was a bit of a scandal at the time, so they couldn't go public until they were married. They both divorced their respective spouses and got married in 1940. They were both eager to film together, but for some reason, Selznick didn't think it was a good idea and never let them. They mounted a few productions of their own, but none of them were successful. A critic, when reviewing one of their works, said, Although Miss Lee and Mr. Olivier are handsome young people, they hardly act their parts at all. These failures came as a huge blow to them, plunging them into financial disaster. As if this wasn't enough, she had a miscarriage in 1945, which caused her to break down mentally. Coupled with her bipolar disorder, the depression was quite severe, and this marked the beginning of several other episodes of bipolar disorder breakdowns. Olivier described the pattern of each episode, several days of hyperactivity, then a period of severe depression, followed by an explosive breakdown. After this, she would have no memory of the event and would be very embarrassed and remorseful. In 1960, she and Olivier got divorced. Although she entered a relationship with Jack Maryville two years before the divorce, they lived together until her death. Death. On July 8, 1967, just 30 minutes after midnight, Maryvale came back to meet Lee's body on the floor. She had died from chronic tuberculosis that she contracted while she was volunteering at a soldier's camp some years earlier. She was cremated, and her ashes scattered on a lake at her summer home. She may be dead, but her legacy lives forever. If you would like to hear from us again, hit the notifications button so you get notified when we release more amazing content like this one, and ensure you are subscribed to this channel. We'll see you some other time. Bye for now.